How did you feel applying paraphrase in this way? It's, it's actually kind of easier to answer it that way. It's it, more natural. It sounds much more natural, mm. right? Okay. Okay. Action. <laughs> did, did you press the button? Yes. No, you didn't. I did. Show me. <laughs> <laughs> you pressed the button, right? I did. That's okay. a good intro. Click your fingers when we All right. when we're ready. Okay. Hi guys, Jim Davis here with IELTS One Two Three. Today I've got a very special guest. I'm Leo. Hi. So Leo asked me a very good question earlier. Why did you ask me, Leo? So I, I am preparing for the IELTS speaking test, and I heard on the grapevine that you probably should paraphrase or like re-say everything the examiner tell you, mm -hmm. so it sounds proper and coherent. Is that true? Yes and no. Mm. So many people say that we should paraphrase everything that the examiner says and avoid repeating any of his or her vocabulary. It's not actually true, though. Believe mm. it or not. We only need to paraphrase what we call key language. Key language could be, say, a key word asked in a question. For example, if you asked how important is your health, mm. what do you think the key word would be in that question? Either important or health. Interesting, you said health. Mm. So important is correct. Important is the key word there. Now we also should try to paraphrase nouns when you hear them. And of course, naturally, every question will have a noun. So, when you hear health, just try to say it. When you hear important, try to show your use of paraphrase. Hmm. For example, how important is your health? For me, it's absolutely essential. Shows a good use of paraphrase. What I'd like to do now, Leo, I just want to see how you would apply this hmm. to a few part one questions. If you're okay with that. But, but what if, what and when do we paraphrase? Okay. Before we get to the example, because I, I need to grasp the concept. <laughs> okay. So in mostly in part one, mm. in parts two and three, it's going to be more difficult to do this. That's simply because the language use will be more complex. Ah. In part one, we are asked very simple questions about familiar topics, and the keywords are very easy to identify. Some of the most Im some of the most common keywords used now speaking part one might be things like often, important, many, in your country, like, etc. Let's have a look at a question now. Mm. Let's say it's how expensive is seafood in your country. Mm. Which word do you think is the keyword in this kind of question? Um, expensive. Yeah. Mm. And the noun? Seafood. So how would we respond to this very simple question? Hmm. In Vietnam, where I came from, the price that we would pay for creatures from the ocean. <laughs> it's difficult okay. to paraphrase nouns, right? Okay. Just like if you're asked about your work or your studies, there are not many paraphrases. Hmm. I could say my line of work, I could say my career or my area or field of expertise, but it doesn't sound natural. We just say it. So wow. how expensive is seafood in your country? Uh, it's quite cheap, I guess. Oh, is that so? Yeah, okay. simple, right? And it's actually usable in an IELTS test too. Exactly. Okay. The reason we do this, it's just to make you sound more confident. Okay. And it's the natural way to communicate in a conversation. Hmm. Like, if I asked you, do you like my shirt, how would you respond? I think it's cute. Perfect. Okay. Right? So you actually don't need to cram everything you know into an answer to show you're a pro. Not at all. Okay. In part one, we are literally just trying to show the examiner that we can hold a conversation in English, speak about ourselves and our country in a natural and confident way. Mm. It's not to show you know a lot about the topic. Okay. It's fine mm. not to know about the topics, to be fair. Mm. So, Leo, what I would like to do now, I just want to ask you maybe three, maybe four questions mm. and see how you apply this use of paraphrase to your answers. Mm. Just try to speak for around 15 to 25 seconds when you answer. Okay. You don't need to worry about your reasons or ideas, or and you don't need any examples. Just naturally as if we were sitting back and having a beer. Okay. Okay. Mm. okay. 
Okay, so first I'm going to give some examples of this, then ask Leo to apply this in his own answers. So here are some examples. Was your hotel nice? Yeah, it was great. How often do you visit parks? I hardly ever go to them. Who is your favorite celebrity? I absolutely adore Johnny Depp. See how I'm doing this, Leo? Mm -hmm. How does it sound to you? Natural. Right? And not repetitive. Good. Now you try. Do you like coffee? I like it as a drink. Uh, not so much for the taste, but more for the impact it has on my body. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Is seafood expensive in your country? It's very affordable because we have a long coastline in Vietnam. Perfect. Good job. How important is your health for you? Um, to me, it's on top of my priority, uh, above my career or my relationship. Fantastic. Have you ever visited a farm before? Of all the places I've been to, I haven't been to a farm. Good job. Been to one. Been ah, to one. Really yeah. close, so really close. Mm -hmm. Good job. What's your favorite TV show? I love watching RuPaul Drag Race, but it's just a reality show. A TV series I literally watch that I enjoy is Behind Your Eyes on Netflix. Good job. Mm. Good job. How did you feel applying paraphrase in this way? It's, it's actually kind of easier to answer it that way because mm. I'm not much of a conversationalist. And, and so if I know that I kind of have to replace or like avoid repeating, then I am in a way forced to come up with more quality phrases. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So it, more natural. It sounds much more natural, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. When I first met Leo, he was really struggling to paraphrase. But now, it's pretty easy, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, keeping all of this in mind, paraphrase is actually simpler than you first might think. All we need to do is listen for that key language, nouns, and any key phrases like in your country or have you ever. By doing this early in the exam, you'll hit that criteria sooner rather than later, and you'll also show a bit more confidence and speak naturally in part one. It's pretty simple to do, as you've seen. Thanks for watching. Jim Davis, Leon. Bye everyone. Nice to see you. Okay. Hi, I'm Kwang. Or Leo, from the fifth floor. <laughs>